on the 2nd of October 1869, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born to the trader caste of the Modh Banya. His family worshipped Vishnu, who personifies the blessed and loving aspect of God in Hindu philosophy. The Gandhis played an important role in the political life of the then miniature state of Porbandar. Just like the grandfather, Gandhi's father was also Divan, a sort of prime minister of the state. Grandfather and father were men of firm principles and had a great love for truth. They were renowned for their courage and for their hot temperament and their sensuality. His mother, Putlibai, was described by Mohandas as a saint of deep religiousness. She was a strong personality with much self-discipline. Her strict vows, as well as her regular fasts, left a deep impression on Gandhi. After the family moved to Rajkot in 1876, Mohandas, at the age of seven, attended primary school, which he completed at the age of 12 with average success. He developed a strong sense of pride during this time and attached great importance to developing his character. He was deeply impressed by the plays Harishchandra and Shravana, which highlighted the unconditional search for truth and the devotion of a son to his blind parents. Shortly after, he changed to the Katyawad High School. At the age of 13, Gandhi was married to Kasturba Nakanji of Pur Bandar, who was the same age. After his schooling, Gandhi wanted to study medicine, which was refused by his family due to religious reasons, since the dissection of flesh was forbidden by his caste. He then decided to study law in England. Although he took a vow to his mother not to touch meat, wine or women, he was expelled by the headmen of the caste, since it was forbidden for members of his caste to travel over the black waters, as the Arabian Sea was then called. At first in London, Gandhi strove to live like an Englishman, which he had to give up soon due to financial reasons. After he started his studies, he invested instead in books, which he read eagerly. He even learned Latin in order to study Roman law. He lived modestly in a small room and cooked for himself. He became a member of the Vegetarian Society, where he met a lot of interesting people who made him aware of his own Indian roots. Consequently, he read the Bhagavad Gita for the first time one of the holy Hindu scriptures, which was an enlightenment for him. Above all, the statement, abstention and renunciation reflect the highest form of religion, left a lasting and deep impression on him. For Gandhi, the Bhagavad Gita became the book par excellence for the recognition of truth, and was for him all through his life a source of optimism and hope. As secretary of the Vegetarian Society, Gandhi wrote articles about Indian customs and eating habits. In June 1891, at the age of 21 years, he successfully completed his studies of British law and received the degree Barrister of Law. The joy of his return to India was clouded when, upon his arrival at Mumbai, he learnt of the death of his beloved mother. Only after he took the ritual baths of atonement, necessary because of the expulsion from his caste, and paid the demanded fine, was he accepted back into the caste as a full member. His stay in India was a short one, because in 1893 Gandhi received an offer to represent an Indian businessman in South Africa in a lawsuit. Shortly after his arrival in Durban, Gandhi personally experienced racist humiliation in the form of insult and violence, which Indians, or coolies, as they were called by the colonial masters, were generally exposed to. 
In the lawsuit, Gandhi achieved a satisfactory settlement for both parties. During his farewell reception, he learnt that Indians in South Africa were to be subjected to further disadvantages, and he decided to stay and support his countrymen in their struggle. The struggle for national self-esteem and against racial discrimination began. To this end, Gandhi, along with his fellow supporters, founded the Natal Indian Congress. In the following months, an organizational structure was set up and Gandhi came into contact with public relations for the first time. He wrote his first political articles about the situation of the Indian in South Africa and gave speeches. As the first Indian lawyer in Natal, he had a lot of work. Simultaneously, he pursued his spiritual development. He read innumerable Hindu and other religious scriptures, as well as many works of Tolstoy. He deepened his medical knowledge, which he would soon bring into practice in various ways. During the Boer War in 1899, Gandhi formed an ambulance corps, which was active on the front for a month. At the birth of his fourth son, Gandhi assisted as midwife. The wish to devote his life to the service of his fellow human beings grew increasingly stronger and further changed his lifestyle. The teachings of non-possession, of renunciation and of equanimity as formulated in the Bhagavad Gita took hold of him. Henceforth, he always endeavoured to implement these yoga teachings in his daily life. He renounced every worldly possession and gave all his earnings to society. To cleanse his body, he read about naturopathy. He refused medicines and fasted and experimented with different diets. Gandhi had great belief in earth and water treatments and discovered the therapeutic value of mud packs. Shortly after the turn of the century, he summarized his medical experiences in a volume, Guide to Health, which would become his most widely read book. Gandhi's body was initially laid out in the rooms and later on the roof of Birla House. The next day, on the 31st of January, he was driven around Delhi for five hours past millions of people. On the banks of the Jamuna River, Gandhi's body was then burned according to Hindu rites on a funeral pyre of sandalwood. Still shocked by the assassination of Gandhi, the whole world took its leave of the prophet of non-violence. After 13 days of mourning, the urn with the remains of Gandhi was brought in a special train to Allahabad to the confluence of Ganges, Jamuna and Saraswati. Gandhi's ashes were strewn by his sons over the holy waters which make beggar and king, sinner and saint equal. Mahatma Gandhi was in a world full of evil, an apostle of tolerance, of non-violence and of belief. The strength of his intellect was the most powerful weapon of peace. The ethics of non-violence, of which he was a living example, live on without boundaries in time or in space.